Welcome back to the Meshcore channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about the Helltech V4. So this is the Helltech V4. I've got it in one of these kind of mesh knowledge cases um, with a large 3 amp hour battery LiPo inside here. Um, I'll leave the link to these cases if you want to have a look. So as I say, Helltech have started shipping these V4s now. So um, a few people obviously started receiving these um, in the post. I think there was a Chinese holiday, so it's taken a bit longer than expected. Anyway, so if yours turns up there's a few things you need to know right off the bat um, about these devices and how to get them working properly with Meshcore so that's what this video is going to be about. So a little disclaimer about the Helltech V4 it does output basically illegal power levels so you're not allowed to use the full output power of these devices um, because the limit on this band is 500 milliwatts with a including your gain of your antenna so i won't get into too much detail about that but basically most of these devices if you're using like a um, a little bit of gain on an antenna it it'll, should be fine but um, with these these actually can output one watt of power without any antenna gain. So it's quite a lot more power than uh, the standard stuff we've been using up until now. So the V4 is actually pretty cool for mobile use because you can use the extra power with small antennas like this to actually kind of, you know, make a bit more of an impact and, and use these for kind of hitting repeaters that you might otherwise not be able to hit from a mobile setup with a small antenna like this. So it's quite useful to have this extra power. So as you can see, this one already has the Meshcore firmware running on it. Um, you might have noticed this noise floor here as well. These devices, they do have an LNA, which is a low noise amplifier, um, which is kind of ironic because normally it brings in, means that it just sort of brings in more noise <laughs> because the band is, is usually full of noise. Um, even though this says quite an alarmingly high noise floor, floor um, don't worry about it too much because I have tested this and even though it reports um, quite a high noise floor, um, it seems to be working absolutely fine. There's no, no issues with this. So yeah, don't worry about that too much. This will probably be a lot better if I move it away from all my computer and everything else anyway and unplug it from USB. It's already gone up to 91 just by disconnecting that. So yeah, don't worry about that too much. So let's talk about firmware then. So obviously this one already has the firmware installed. Um, the firmware is available on the flasher now, so you can just hit V4 and you can see that there. Incidentally, one more thing I'll say about this. I actually removed this um, screen cover. If we just go back to this, sorry, more fingers and thumbs. Um, if we go to here, you can see this screen cover on here. I removed that and it just reveals the normal screen that you see that you would have on a like a V3. Because um, I just found it too dim and it was interfering with putting it in certain cases. Uh, these Helltech V4s will actually fit in V3 cases, but the power leads are kind of in a funny place, so you might have to do a bit of um, uh, bodgery to actually get it to work. But anyway, onto this, like normal, just click on companion radio Bluetooth if that's what you want, um, and you can select the, the firmware here, which is 1.9.0, and then you can basically hit flash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise this one and show you what happens when you use our stock firmware again you'll see it identified here when it pops up on there so you can just click on that and i'm just going to erase this device and then we're going to start again so i can show you um, what happens with the setup if you find yourself in the situation where the device won't connect to the computer you can use the usual kind of button press so it's basically hold down the top button then press the um, reset and then it will actually put it in like dfu mode so if we head back to the flasher disconnect and then reconnect it there just so we see which one it actually is and um, got a few devices connected to this computer hit connect and then you'll see that it'll actually start um, start doing the job now so that's the thing about a lot of these new esp devices um, to get them into dfu mode you can actually hold down the user button then press like the reset button um, and then that will put it into the dfu mode so as you can see firmware is installing nicely now off we go and then we can take a look at the device here. Right, so this is now booting up and we can see the Bluetooth pin on the screen. So I'm gonna head over to the web app, I'm gonna hit connect on there and we're gonna connect to this one and it's gonna ask for, for the Bluetooth pin. So I'm just gonna tap that in. Um, it's on the screen of the device, connect and yeah, I don't know what's happened there, but sometimes this can happen. Um, 
we will just go through the settings again and just get it. Sometimes that happens. You just have to like cancel it and, and just restart. It has actually paired. It's just, you know, done something strange. Anyway, so that's it. It's it's now set up. Obviously, you can do your usual stuff like set your um, name and everything else. Um, you are going to obviously want to choose the narrow preset if that's what you're using. That's kind of the, the sort of thing now that everyone's using. So you might have noticed that in the transmit power setting here, it's actually defaulted to 10 dBm. So 10 dBm is nothing. And basically the way this works is the 10 is the power coming out of the actual physical radio chip. So actually 10 dBm with the amplifier power is around about 22 dBm, which is what your normal nodes will put out, which is like 150, 160 milliwatts. So that's just one thing to sort of realize about this. Now, obviously, you know, you might want to experiment with higher power levels, but I'm just going to show you what this actually outputs um, using the tools and stuff that I've got here. So I've got here a tiny SA and I've also got an attenuator and a bunch of connectors to get this to work. Um, it's not ideal. There'll be a bit of insertion loss here. Um, anyway, um, you can see here that this attenuator is 40 dB. So that is basically attenuating um, up to 10 watts um, of power going into this tiny SA. Don't, for crying out loud, plug in your uh, your V4 straight into a, t a tiny SA because it will just go pop and it will never receive anything again. Um, so yeah, that's something to bear in mind. So in order to set this up, I've got my frequency set. I've done an 800 to 900 megahertz span. I'm gonna go back out here and I'm gonna go to level. I'm gonna go into the external gain menu and I'm gonna do minus 40 to compensate for my attenuator here. And that will basically put that in the right range now to actually measure the output power. So also before I measure anything, I'm just gonna go over to the um, trace menu. So go trace, then go to calc off, and then you wanna set max hold. And then what that will do is that will just hold the um, maximum value that the um, Tiny SA has received there. So basically now all I'm gonna do is just go into the MeshCore web app and just send a flood advert. Um, do that and you should see a big spike and the spike stays there. So 23.9 dBm. So that is the output of the Heltec V4 at um, the setting of 10 dBm. You can see it's clearly not 10 dBm, it's 20, nearly 24 according to this device here. 22 around that mark is absolutely fine. Now, what if you want to make that higher, if you want to increase that power, so back into the settings and I'll try it and type in 22, for example, to try and really make this do full power. So I'm gonna hit go on there and you see we get an error. You can't set any higher than 10 dBm on this um, device using this, this client. It won't actually allow you to do it. Same on the apps, it's the same everywhere. So a few of you might have encountered this problem. You're not able to do that. In order to do this, um, currently you have to run like a dev firmware, build the dev firmware, or get somebody else to build the dev firmware for you, or you can actually use a nightly build, um, which is available. So that is available here at this website. Um, this user has actually is actually doing nightly builds of the latest dev firmware. So what we can do is we can scroll down here and we can find. Um, Heltec V4, it's not where you'd expect it with the other ones, it's sort of somewhere down, uh, right down here somewhere. Um, there we go. So companion radio, BLE, night, nightly. So what we can do here is just click on this to download the firmware. See, there it is up there. And then we can flash that by going back to the mesh core flasher and going right down to the bottom here, custom firmware. Wait for that to pop up. We can select the firmware here and then we can do open. And I'm gonna just put this device into DFU mode manually just in case it doesn't do it on its own. Um, I'm not gonna erase this time, I'm just gonna flash that. And we should be able to just double check which one it is. It's normally that 3101. So we just use that one and we're just gonna flash the firmware. Notice I didn't use the merged firmware, I just used the normal one. So now we're gonna reset and the device is gonna come back up on here, it's now connected. So I can go back to my web app and we can just 
go into the settings here and we can then go to 22 dBm. Let's go full beans into the dummy load. And you can see that it now lets me set that 22 dBm. So if we now check the power output on this, just going back on the web app to flood advert again, and let's just click on there and you can see now it's 29.9 dBm. You see how, how little that moved up from the um, on, on that scale. That's a really good indication of showing you, you know, that it is quite a lot more power, but it actually isn't in sort of relative terms. So there you go, 29.9 dBm. Now, if you want to see that in like milliwatts or watts, you can actually go to the level menu, go unit, and you can change this to watts. So now you can actually see here 986 milliwatts. You know, you might actually see more than that the next time you do it. Possibly you might see less and we can just try it again just to see if we can get any any higher on there. Now it seems about that, but seems about what it is, 986 milliwatts, which is pretty damn good um, for a device like this. And it's running on five volts USB power, so that's pretty good. So there you go, guys. That is how you get around that issue. I know a few of you have been having that issue, not being able to set more than 10 dBm output um, on there, which of course is, is 22 dbm or thereabouts anyway um, so i should think that change will actually be merged into the main flash of firmware soon so this whole process of kind of you know downloading that nightly build will be irrelevant anyway but it's useful to know how these devices work when they have built-in amplifiers um, incidentally this is quite cool it's a little um, gps screen that you can activate on here now it's pretty cool that you can actually see the the gps info on the screen there in real time so that's it for this one guys hope you've enjoyed it remember the disclaimer at the beginning of the video use any extra power responsibly and i'll catch you on the mesh